الحمد لله مالك الملك مجري الفلك مسخر الرياح خالق الاصباح ديان الدين رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين أمين الله على وحيه وعزائم أمره الخاتم لما سبق والفاتح لما استقبل والمهيمن على ذلك كله وعلى أهل بيته شجرة النبوة وموضع الرسالة ومهبط العلم ومعدن العلم ومهبط الوحي For the hastening of the return of our Imam, please recite a salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. First, I need to express my condolences on this very sad occasion, on this very sad night, the night of Shahada to Zahra alayhi salam, the martyrdom of the lady Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. Secondly, I would like to thank you to giving or actually giving me this opportunity to be among you commemorating the martyrdom of the lady Fatima alayhi salatu wa salam. The Lady Fatima, such a prominent, important Islamic figure. It is a personality that we can derive lessons from. She is the wife of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and the daughter of the messenger, messenger of Allah Rasulullah Muhammad. The aspects of this personality are too much, and one session could not be really enough to talk about, such as the relation with her father, the relation with Amir al Mu'mineen, her husband. The relation with her sons, Al-Imam Al-Hassan and Al-Hussein, as well as the social relation with the society. All these one night will not be enough. But we are going to be talking about one aspect. And it is the social life of Lady Fatima. And the responsibility that she fulfilled after the death of her father, Rasulullah. A fact, if it was not for what Lady Fatima alayhi salam did, we would not have Shia today. We would not have the proper message of the messenger of Allah, Rasulullah Muhammad. Not wrong. That's what we appreciate as Sayyidah Zahra. What kind of responsibility she fulfilled? If we go back in history to take a look about what happened after the death of Rasulullah. We see that there's only one person took upon his shoulders to take, to take care of all the burial ceremony of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And it was Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. He took up on his shoulder, taking care of the dafan. Let's start with takhseel, the kafan of Rasulullah, the salat on Rasulullah, and the actual burial of Rasulullah. Narration states while he was leveling up the grave of Rasulullah, a person come to Amir al-Mu'mineen. 
and he tells him, Ya Ali, the people in Saqifa are gathered and they actually pledged allegiance to Abi Bakr. What did Amir Mu'min do? How did he respond? He started reciting the first verse of Surah Al-Kahf, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. It's like you just saying, it's just you say that I'm a believer. You don't think that there's going to be a test for you. And actually, in that time, Amir al-Mu'minin is declaring and stating that there is a fitna is affecting the Islamic Ummah that time, and it's the great. A great fitna, a big one. أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ People are claiming that the, they are the successors of Rasulullah and Amir al-Mu'mineen was busy taking care of all the burial ceremonies of Rasulullah. This is a fitna. What do we really mean in fitna? If we go back in Nahj al-Balagha, I wrote this hadith on a piece of paper. If we go back to Nahj al-Balagha, and it's also mentioned in Usul al-Kafi as well, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib has a great description. And it might be referring to this topic that Abu Bakr taken off the Khilafa from Amir al-Mu'mineen. He says, إِنَّمَا بِدْءُ وُقُوعِ الْفِتَنِ The starting of a fitna. أَهْوَاءٌ تُتَّبَعْ There are desires going to be followed. وَأَحْكَامٌ تُبْتَدَعْ And there are going to be some false rulings Introduced into the Islamic law. يُخَالَفُ فِيهَا حُكْمُ اللَّهِ يَتَوَلَّى فِيهَا رِجَالٌ رِجَالًا أَلَا إِنَّ الْحَقِّ The most important part. أَلَا إِنَّ الْحَقِّ لَوْ خَلُصَ لَمْ يَكُنْ اِخْتِلَاف If it was people who are acting only حق, it will be clear. This person is acting haq. You know that this guy is on haq. وَلَوْ أَنَّ الْبَاطِلَ خَلُصَ لَمْ يُخَفْ عَلَى ذِي حُجَرَ And if it was these people who are acting batil, are acting only batil, it's going to be clear as well. So it's going to be actually really easy to say that this guy is on haq. And this guy is on batil. But what happened is he continues saying, لَكِنَّهُ يُؤْخَذُ مِنْ هَذَا ضِغْثٌ وَمِنْ هَذَا ضِغْثٌ But actually what's happening in the fitna is the leadership of the fitna is taking some of the haq and some of the batil فَيُمْزَجَانِ and he mixes them up. After the mixer, mixture, the shaitan controls the leadership of the fitna. This is actually one of the best statements that Amir al-Mu'mineen gives the right description and declares what is fitna. And he's referring back to what happened that time. If it was people doing only bad deeds, you can see this guy is a bad guy. You can point on him. But what happened is Abu Bakr that time was with Rasulullah. And he was actually mixing right and wrong. What caused confusion that time to the Islamic ummah. I'm talking about ordinary people getting affected. Not like people had insight in their hearts.
No, the ordinary common people outside in the Islamic Ummah will be get infected because they probably they will not be living in Medina. So they saw Abu Bakr claiming that he's the successor after Rasulullah. And he's saying some good words. He knows how to talk Arabic well. Sitting on the member of Rasulullah. So, yes, this is the successor. This is the fitna. One of the main factors in fitna is ambiguity. Iltibas al haqq and batil. That's what Abu Bakr used that time. As an example, when the lady Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam comes to Abu Bakr asking him, Abu Bakr, you kicked out my workers from the land of Farak and it's my land. What is going on? How did he respond? Abu Bakr told her, Yes, of course, Lady Fatima. Um, for sure, he's talking politely because she's the daughter of Rasulullah, of the successor that he's claiming of. So he has to show people outside that, yes, I really respect this lady. He's like, yeah, for sure, Lady Fatima, of course, it's your land. But, you know, in the Islamic law, you have to grab two witnesses. Lady Fatima, for sure, she's going to say the truth. She doesn't. She is not actually looking for the land itself. She used this kind of statement to clarify the oppression, the oppressors that time. She is doing her share of defending the Imam at that time. She's not looking into this land. Everybody knows the ayah. She bakes and she cooks inside the house only bread. And at the night, somebody knocks the door asking for food. And all what they got in that house that time is, was this loaf of bread. And she hands it out to that faqir, to that person. She is not looking for land at all. All what she got, she gives. Fatima to Zahra, the prominent Islamic figure. So she comes to Abu Bakr and asks him, asking him back, Farak, she says you have to grab two witnesses. Truthfully, she said, I have my husband Ali ibn Abi Talib and I got Ummu Ayman. And then he kind of laughs. The, 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 the statement and actually the narration doesn't state, but what you understand from, he's kind of being sarcastic and he's like, Lady Fatima, uh, you know, actually uh, within the court of Islam, you got to get two men or one man and two women, right? Where is the ambiguity? He's talking the same words of Rasulullah. He's talking in the Islamic laws, rulings. Everybody's looking at. And yes, for sure, what he was saying is right. And it was in the Quran as well. But where is the ambiguity here? What is wrong? Amir al-Mu'mineen clears this. Tells him, Ya Abu Bakr, what are you doing? Since when do Rasulullah ask a guy that has a position of an object for grabbing people as witnesses to testimony? You are the one, Ya Abu Bakr, who is claiming that the lady Fatima do not own the land. You have to grab the witnesses. Not Lady Fatima. She already has the position of the land. She owns the land. She is not claiming nothing. Abu Bakr, Umar, you are claiming that this land is not for Lady Fatima. This is ambiguity. The main characteristics for fitna is ambiguity. Especially in Islam. To act like you are in Islam. And you are really known for every Islamic rulings. You know every small and big thing. And what actually behind the scene is false. That's what happened in Fitnat Nahrawan with Amir al-Mu'mineen. 
Everybody was saying, Lillah al The governor is Allah. Nobody is the governor. I'm talking about the companion of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And they took the Qur'an and put it on the sword and they start saying that we are the Muslims. Wa Rasulullah. Lillah al This is in the deen. Why should we really talk about this? Why am I choosing this kind of subject to talk about? The fitna itself. I'm not going through the biography. I'm just choosing a small a topic to discuss and examine. I know I promised my brother just to take around 15, 10 minutes. So I'm not trying to exceed my time here. But it is a really deep subject to talk about, the fitna. Question is, why are we discussing this kind of topic? Another question is, what happened that time? Is it going to happen again? For sure. And more as well. We all know that history repeats itself. And our narration states that fitna, and the really main fitna is going to happen in Akhir zaman So knowing the fitna, and after that, avoiding the fitna. Main characteristics is ambiguity. Number two is kalimatu haqqin yuradu biha batil. A true statement with, with false intentions. You are trying to show people that you know everything in Islam, but the intentions behind what you are planning to say is all false. That's why now, especially in this time, you, don't, you have to really be informed on each and every political, social event happens within the Islamic Ummah. So when you see somebody talking in Islam, you have to know who is this guy and what is he saying and should I take it or no? Because people who were not living in Medina did not know that Abu Bakr is a successor or not. The ordinary thing. But what really bugs me and what's really disappointed is between al ghadir the event of Ghadir, all the Islamic Ummah, thousands of people coming to Amir al Mu'minin and pledging allegiance. Bakhan, bakhan laka ya Ali. Happened on the 10th after Hijra, on the 18th of the Hijjah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi passed away on the 28th, 28th of Safar, which is exactly around two months. And 12 days, two months and 12 days was enough to flip on Amir al Mu'minin. What kind of ummah? So to know how dangerous is fitna, you can look into this. All the Islamic, the entire Islamic ummah is pledging allegiance to Amir al Mu'minin. In the Ghadir event, and after Rasulullah passed away, the Muhajireen and Ansar, the Tulaqa, they gathered in Saqifah. May Allah curse the Saqifah. And they pledged allegiance to Abu Bakr. This is the fitna. So, ambiguity, which leads to hypocrisy. And then a true statement that you show people with bad and false intentions. These are the main characteristics what happen in fitna. And if it was people acting only haq, you can know that this person is on haq. But the point is, Amir al-Mu'mineen makes it clear. Law khalus al haq, but there's no clear and pure haq. People are acting haq and batil 
and some people are acting batil and haq fayumzajani ma'an fayajiani fitna starts that time how should we and what position should we take in fitna I'm going to choose tomorrow to talk, to talk about how to avoid going into fitna. And again, this topic is really important. Why we are choosing this topic? Because the real fitna is happening in Akhir zaman I think till here I'm reaching to the end. Again, I'll re I need to thank everybody for giving me this opportunity to uh, commemorate everybody here, to commemorate the martyrdom of the Lady Fatima. Alayha afdal salatu wa salam. Nas'alullah li wa lakum tawfiq. And the best end is with dua al-faraj. Imam sahab al-asr wa al-zaman. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan. Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi al-sa'a wa fi kulli sa'a. وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين